Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. In this film, we're going to be carrying on the Jim Carrey career review series. We are moving on to his next film where he didn't really take that much of an important role in. Peggy Sue Got Married. This film was mainly more focused on the actress who played Peggy Sue and Nicolas Cage, whereas Jim Carrey is more of a side character in this film. But before we get into my thoughts on the film, it's time to get into the numbers. But also, before we get into the numbers, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, any other content in the past or in the future, as always, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, The Works. We also have a Discord link down in the description box down below. Click on it, join it, come chat with us. We are a variety channel. We'll pretty much do most of them. Everything. The numbers of Peggy Sue Got Married. Critics rate this film an 8.6 out of 10, while audiences rate this film a 5.5 out of 10. The budget of this film was $18 million, and they made back in the box office, $41.5 million. Now, moving on to my thoughts of the film, the pros, cons, and comments. Starting with the comments this time. The way that this film had went, it definitely did feel like an 80s film. This is kind of where, in the point in time where 80s films in general kind of finally started getting that 80s feel. Typically, films from like 80 to like 83 were still kind of feeling like 70 films. A little bit later in like 83s when they started actually clicking in as 80 films and I believe that this is the first film that Jim Carrey and Nicolas Cage worked together on the same project. Pros of this film. You can definitely tell that he hasn't really peaked just yet but Nicolas Cage is definitely still a nut. It seemed like as the film went on he got a little bit more serious with his character but he had moments where he was still the nut job that he usually is. The attention to detail was also very great. Whenever like she had like injured her hand, she ended up wrapping her hand with bandages and everything. And typically, sometimes movies tend to forget that detail later on down the road. And for the time span of how the injury took place and the amount of time that the scene needed, it stayed with that attention to detail as it as it went on to the very next day. And for a comedy film, this seemed more like a, a comedy drama film. So I was definitely attached to how the story was going and how the writing was taking place. So the acting was definitely top notch for this kind of film. Everyone, I don't know why, but I want to give Nicolas Cage some props for being able to change his voice in the uh, flashback time travel scenes where it made him sound like he was younger and then when he was older he had his normal 80s voice so I'll give him props for being able to keep his voice younger on the time travel scene and uh, of course Jim Carrey in this film was top-notch Jim Carrey crackhead. The uh, prosthetics and the makeup of this film was my last uh, pro because basically by the time I got halfway through this film I stopped taking notes is because usually that means one of two things. Either A, I'm actually really enjoying the film and I'm just lost and wrapped up in the story, or B, I am absolutely bored out of my mind. Moving on to the cons, I kind of wondered how she was able to go back in time after basically fainting and hitting her head. I'm assuming it was basically a dream sequence by the time of the end of the film because it wasn't really explained until we got to the final scene which it could have been like one of those scenarios where she got a concussion and went back to relive her life events and everything although some events seemed like they changed at the same time you can't really predict whether those events were changed or not because you never really saw how they unfolded originally so was it a fever dream? Was it actually her time traveling because she got a concussion? Who knows? Breaking time travel rules, speaking about future events, that kind of breaks the timeline and it could just fuck up a lot of things when it comes to time traveling rules. Again, this is where I kind of think it was more of like a dream sequence instead of she actually went back in time because people who get severe head injuries do end up like going into like a dream kind of state that makes them feel like they're going back in time to right some wrongs and trying to relive moments and change how things turn out so that's what could have 
would have been happening, which could explain why she was revealing a lot of future events to the younger version of her friends. But if it actually was time travel, she just basically fucked up time and everyone's fucked. At some point in the film, uh, Nicolas Cage, his younger version, just the way he said, ah, in one of the scenes kind of sounded off. That's probably the only thing I didn't like about Nicolas Cage's young, younger voice. It's just the way he said that. There was a lot of horrible ad-libs in the film, a, very, a lot of horrible ones that just kind of, you could tell that they were edited in and editing after the filming was done, so that was me. And, I mean, it's an 80s film. Not, it doesn't really get talked about that much nowadays because it's a very sensitive topic, but polygamy was brought up. Not against it. It was, just, it was kind of weird hearing the topic of polygamy being brought up in a film. So, after that, I'm going to reveal my number for this film. Overall, this film was actually very good, surprisingly. I don't understand how, I guess, audiences didn't really like the film. I don't know. I don't know if it's based off a book or off of like a remake or something. But I really enjoyed it a lot. It really grabbed my attention, surprisingly. I figured that I'd be laughing a lot of the time because of how goofy and funny it was at the beginning. As it went on, it got more serious, it got more drama filled, and it kind of surprised me how it took that turn during the film and just went more serious and more serious as it went on. And with how the writing was done for this film was actually really good for an 80s film. And so with that, I'm going to give Peggy Sue Got Married a 8 out of 10. Solid number. Not quite like fantastic film because it's not exactly one of the kind of films I would go out of my way and go watch on a daily basis, but I will admit I had fun watching it. I enjoyed it a lot. That's why it gets an 8. So, um, there you have it. Those are my thoughts. Uh, next time you shall see us, I will have a bunch of more reviews coming up for more other movies and everything, and a couple other side projects that I may plop in there down the road of surprises but until then this is Mike Check 95 another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review signing off